Well, Joe Miller predicting the future there because Rocket coming into this game after smashing Millennium. And I just want to also hit on a point that Joe said in there. A team of five superstars put together might not pull out results. Alliance are also feeling that as well. Yeah, that's the case. Zero and, zero and three right now. We'll have to see if they go zero and four. And, you know, the players that we're talking about for the moment is, of course, Rocket. You talked about how they smashed Millennium. They accelerated to a 5,000 gold lead just during the laning phase, thanks to some immensely powerful ganks from Jankos. He was helping out Zazus in particular. And Zazus has also not died yet in their two games. The only the member now. The only member of the LCS. He went 4-0 and 12 in total. The one thing that is very good about Rocket. They react well to things that they're not used to. Super Hot Crew tried a fast push strategy against them, and the teamwork and the coordination between Jankos and the rest of Rocket allowed them to defend it. And also, they look very good in their team fights. You know, Overpower himself said that their objective fights are their speciality, and it's something that Rocket continues to do well in the games we've seen. And of course, Copenhagen Wolves on day one, they had that victory over Alliance, and we were like shocked. And he's like, this is the Wolves. This is what we're expecting. The 113 to 20 uh, amateur stats yep. prove themselves. We thought, can they do anything else? But unfortunately for them, they did lose two games yesterday. One was the Gambit. Not too upsetting for them, I suppose. But the dramatic loss to SK Gaming, that would have hurt. Yeah, they fought incredibly hard against SK Gaming. As a team, they went 12, 17, and 29 in a 55-minute match. During the course of that game, Wolves took 10 towers, SK took 9. Wolves took 4 dragons, SK took 3. Wolves took 1 baron, and SK grabbed 2. The point I'm trying to raise is, Wolves actually had a higher number of objectives uh, uh, throughout the game, but their fights and their mismatches didn't work, work for them. Um, you know, when they beat Alliance, I feel it was Alliance misplaying, and Copenhagen Wolves took advantage of it. SK did not do that yesterday. And the things they've got to learn from, poor pick and ban phase as well as itemization against Gambit, and the lead they had over SK Gaming was lost because they decided to keep pushing the top lane and it backfired, allowing them to get attacked from behind. And as you can hear, the little chat pops going. The players are ready to go. Yeah. So let's check out those starting lineups. On the blue side, it is going to be Rockat. And of course, that means Zazas in that top lane. The unkillable, the immortal. Will he hold out that status in this match? We'll see. Jankos, the jungler, fantastic stats for him. Overpower, crazy mid laner. Selavar in the AD carry and Vanda alongside him. And of course, over on the red side, we do have the Copenhagen Wolves. Young Buck up top, amazing in the jungle. Kautard in the mid lane. Forgiven as your AD carry, as well as Unlimited as your support. So what do we see coming up in this game? Picks and bans. How, what do you do against a team that's already played Malphite and Pantheon? You have to ban champions that aid your composition, or champions you know that you don't want to face. In this case, Kastan is definitely going to feature. Has been banned against both of these teams twice already, and I also think Elise is going to be a priority pick. Banned once against Rocket, banned twice against Copenhagen Wolves, and we know Jankos and Amazing both like to play those champions. Vi and Thresh do go down. We'll see whether that's going to hamper Amazing or not. Jankos, we've seen, like you say, on Evelyn. He's been on Elise. He's been on a number of champions throughout this tournament already. Kassadin is taken away. No surprises there, honestly. Elise taken away as well. So that's going to be from Jankos. Evelyn has to be banned out by the Wolves, I feel. The last ban. My also concern here is that Leona and Annie are still up and available. I really like the Thresh being taken away from Vanda. It's something that he's used in both of the previous games. And I think Vanda's Thresh is probably the scariest support Thresh out of all of the European teams so far. He's the one that's made the impact with those death sentences one after the other. Interesting to see Rocket banning Kale. Yeah. When you consider it was actually what Kaltod used against Alliance to help them win their game and Overpower used to secure their spot in the LCS. Final ban. What will it be from the Wolves? Will it be Evelyn? No. Annie. Yeah. So, do they go for a top laner? They choose and value. Selivers, AD carry, Kaylin. This is scary because if they lock this in, Mundo and Shivana could and most likely would be picked up by the Copenhagen Wolves. It's Definitely for We have seen them yeah. running. We know they like to play them, and you've seen how powerful those tanks can become just in the previous game with, you know, Renekton just getting so far away. That's an insta-lock. Insta-lock Lee Sin, actually, from Amazing. So he's, he's making it very clear he wants that aggressive jungler and he wants to get in people's faces. Oh, we're just waiting to see what Youngbook's going to go with. We know what the jungler will be, which means Rocket will delay theirs, I feel, because I don't think they have to panic about maybe Evelyn being taken away. 
Yasuo being locked in. Second game running now, this time for the Wolves, alongside Lee Sin, just like we saw for Millennium. So we may actually be seeing the Copenhagen Wolves running a similar strategy so far. It didn't work for Millennium because they had no ability power damage to back up the physical armor. And I think seeing that, you know, that's what you've got to deal with. Rocket now has to start thinking, well, why don't we lock tanks in? Why don't we consider doing exactly what Fnatic did? You can see a playbook there sitting with Rocket discussing, hey, we didn't really see this one coming. So what do we want to use? What do you want to change? And they're going for almost an exact copy. We may see very similar comps to the previous game. Well, we'll see where they counter it. The playbook clearly in the hands of Overpower there. Actually, that's not Overpower, that's Yankos, I believe. Yes, it is. Yeah, Yankos. So he's obviously the shot caller, clearly doing a lot of talking here. May well be the main shot caller for the team. Not really got that information so far. Shivana, well, Young has been up against Shivana and against SK Gaming. He saw firsthand what Freddy 122 could do against him, and Young was helpless with Mondo in that game. I wonder if he's going to go with something different. I'm very happy to see the Shivana because, in my mind, he would have done a better job yeah. than Renekton in the previous game. So I like this. This is basically the upgrade to Fnatic's comp from the previous matchup. The question is now, how does the rest of these lanes get rounded out for the Copenhagen Wolves? They could put Yasuo in the top lane. They could put him there knowing that it's most likely going to be Shivana if they wanted to go that route, if they want to leave him as that heavy assassin in the mid lane. I don't know really what they want to do for top, and it's not locked in on the Dr. Mundo just yet, so we'll have to see who they decide to put up there. Of course, with Mundo alongside him, what would we expect in the mid lane? I don't expect to see... I don't know, maybe Yasuo is going to be the mid laner for Kaltai, or yeah. maybe that's going to be younger. Of course, Mundo if does Mundo get locked in, locked that almost in. certainly is. Yep. It's going to be a Lucian. Wow, this is identical to Millennium so far, apart from the Mundo. Definitely working a little bit different. They've they've got a real tank in the top lane as, as opposed, opposed to the Gragas. To, Gragas, uh, 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 to be fair, uh, Gragas' recommended items also make him build tanks. So maybe yeah. that's maybe it's a design thing for somebody to talk about in the background. And it, it's it's leveling up each of the the two different compositions. I think Karthus would be a brilliant idea here because if Kaltard assassinates Karthus, he's still going to get his Requiem down. And as long as Rocket stay on that Defile range, it actually forces Copenhagen Wolves to take all of that magical damage. You highlighted Evelyn. We talked about how good Jankos was on him yesterday. And that is all the magic damage you need. You can, you know, jump in from the side. I, I prefer Karthus. I don't think you need more physical here. I really think so AP might be the way to go. He's obviously thinking he's going to be up against... Yasuo in that mid, and he's just wondering what am I going to counter it with? Riven? Potentially. He saw, obviously, in that mid lane, I think it was game one he played Riven? Uh, game sure. two, actually. Well, uh, it was Nuke that played it in game two. Yes. I think in game one. No, no, no. Uh, uh, if against NIP, it was Kale. Yeah, he played over yes, Kale yes, and, yes. and carried him through that way. Of course way. he did. <laughs> he so just dominated I'm, it. I'm concerned about the Riven because the same weaknesses that, that Millennium had now Rocket has, mm. that they do have a massive focus on physical damage. There are nice shields here. It's very difficult to assassinate Shinomana, very difficult to assassinate Riven. And yes, Evelyn does have a very high amount of magic damage, but I almost think I would have preferred the Karthus to wrap up that composition. And you know what? Other than Lee Sin, there's no knockups to help out Yasuo here. He has to make all that damage himself. He has to do the knockout. Not that hard of a skill, honestly. But it would help if you get help with a little bit of help from your fr friends. I have completely messed that line. They're, they're going to be able to get Lulu's Wild Growth to help out, as well as Shivana's Knockback. As soon as Dragon's Descent goes in, that will actually be enough. No, wrong team. You are right. You got distracted. I am right. Yeah, you are right. You're 100% right. Uh, Lee Sin is the only one. That's it. Yeah. Kickback. Dragon's Rage, only thing that's going to interrupt it. We're not going to have the Gragas Barrel plus three man, which is what Millennium did mm. just above the Baron Pits that helped them win that fight. And I think the onus is going to be on Copenhagen Wolves to not lose towers to Caitlyn Lulu. So Rocket will be looking for the 2v1. And as long as Copenhagen Wolves don't lose towers and don't fall behind early, maybe that composition can work out for them. But I think if they build up enough armor, they can actually, you know, uh, deal with the Riven, Caitlyn, etc. I'm excited to see what Yankos is going to do. Um, it could be interesting. He's gone rapid on the desk up before. Let's see if he's going to do it again in the jungle. Now, though, let's see what you fans at home have been favoring. Checking the votes online, it looks like 54% of you believe that Rocket will put out the win here. And not quite on the hype train that we as casters are right now. And I know Deficio is definitely on this train. He is excited. He's like a little kid before Christmas to see what the Rocket versus Alliance game is going to be like later on. That's the final game of the day. Right now, we're into game three. Rocket 
will be starting out as the blue team. They're going to be up against the Copenhagen Wolves, who are searching out, trying to get their second win. Yeah, they're one and two right now. This is the last game of the week for the Copenhagen Wolves. I'd like to see how Rocket handle their team fights. I think part of the reason we get so excited when we look at Rocket and how they've been performing over the last few games is they are so immensely strong in all of their fights, and their coordination seems to just be on another level right now. And they're going to be put to the test against the Copenhagen Wolves. So here we go. There is Rocket. Salva, the AD carry alongside him, will be Vanda on that Lulu, and of course, Kautard. We'll see how his Yasuo performs because he only has the help of Amazing to punt them in the air. Of course, he can do it himself with his skill shot, the Q, the Steel Tempest. Whether he'll be able to do that, will we be going to have any first bloods? Remember, we saw Millennium face checking straight in towards. Fnatic last time around, that chopper finds its home and Zaza's immediately taking damage from that infected cleaver. Yeah, Young Buck's just going to keep throwing them out. He is running Flash Teleport on that Dr. Mundo, which is becoming the standard whenever we see Mundo up in the top lane. So we'll see how his teleports come into use later in the matchup, but I think where we need to keep all of our action focused will be on the mid lane. We need to be seeing how overpowers Riven will deal with Kautard's Yasuo. I think that the matchup will favor Riven probably in the early game, and as long as Overpower doesn't get a little bit too far ahead, I actually see a lot of damage being able to be put down by Yasuo, and it's going to be quite an, an action-packed lane. But no first blood. No easy kills, and that means Forgiven will be just staring at Silver down that bottom lane. It does, of course, mean that we are going to have standard meta being set up here. Once again, it is Youngbook going to try and come in there. He's going for the little blue bait. It is going to be simply the ward being placed down there. Yankos is coming up, though. Youngbook has to back away from this. And he has got a lot of hit points, but not just yet. He's only level one. Well, we'll see how well uh, Copenhagen Wolves adapt to this straight-up matchup. I think Caitlin Lulu is going to be pretty good at actually dealing with Lucian and Leona in that uh, uh, lane. It does actually look like the swaps are coming in from Rocket, realizing that maybe something fishy is up. You can see the 80 carries and supports, are, <laughs> they've actually met in the middle, and I think Rocket have responded to this very well. Copenhagen Wolves do not want to go for that 2v2. I think they want to try to shut down Riven, try to control him, and I want to highlight that Unlimited has gone for an ancient coin as his first item. This is one of the first times you see a Leona not going for a Relic Shield. They don't want to push the lane very hard and don't want to try to get an early level 2 to all in. Well, rotations continue because immediately the Copenhagen Wolves, they're going to have themselves up against another 2v2 partnership because Overpower is heading back to that mid lane. He wants to fight up against Yasuo. That means Unlimited is going to be trying to land them stuns onto Selva. Well, we'll see how he does manage to make it. Copenhagen Wolves have done two swaps already. And we'll see if on the first back, they once again try to roam, once again try to, you know, get a more favorable setup. And I think as long as Copenhagen Wolves defend their towers against this Caitlyn-Lulu combination, it's a good start. But look at the poke already. Lulu and Caitlyn will out-poke Leona and Lucian any day of the week, but they've caught Vanda. Unlimited's going in, gets the stun down. Here comes Amazing. Will it be close enough, though? Has the flash for it. He does get in there. Hasn't quite got the damage onto Vanda. Forgiven goes aggressive. He tries to dash in there, but Rockat survived. They managed to get the flash out of Vanda, so the next time Unlimited gets a good Zenith Blade into Shield at Daybreak, that could be the first blood kill. We talked about how the poke is superior for Rocket. The all-in and kill potential is much more superior for Copenhagen Wolves. So as long as they keep landing those skill shots, Rocket are going to be a little bit of trouble. Jankos was standing by, ready and waiting to join them at the tower. He's just took the golems and he's going to back away. We see Vanda going back. Salava on his own at the moment, just trying to hold fire against Forgiven and Unlimited. Of course, Amazing did back away. He's going to be going back towards the north now. So, rotations once again, Trevor. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves don't actually want the 2v2. I, I'm not sure what the thinking is because they're running the risk of allowing Salava and Vanna to get the tower and overpower. He may take some damage. does manage to back away in time. And I am, you know what it's actually for? They are defending Yasuo. I think they are scared that Overpower's Riven is going to control Kautard's Yasuo, and he's more comfortable relying on that Steel Tempest. It's only a cooldown. There's no mana cost available, and can just carry on CSing from range. Yankos is going to walk past Amazing. Amazing, Amazing will see him, and this could be Yankos in trouble. Yankos could be in trouble. So far, he's only died once in the LCS, and Amazing putting a lot of damage back down on towards him. And Liberty is going to try and come around. That Zenith Blade's not got the range yet, though, and that's going to force him away. He's flashed for it. Oh, and a quick flash 
that was quick reactions from Jankos. Very good reaction time. Flash for a flash, but that at least dissuades that first gank. Now, Copenhagen Wolves keeping overpower under pressure. He's four CS down. His tower is now taking damage. And this is exactly what the Copenhagen Wolves need to do to get this sort of early mid-game power spike of their champions going. Get some early towers, get some early gold. It looks like the duo lane is... Heading back to the mid, of course they are. So Overpower's going to be switching once again. He's going to be going down to the bottom. And you know, it's Copenhagen Water that are initiating all of these chains. So it'd be interesting to see whether Rockout, with the reaction we play, are going to keep up with CS because at the moment they're falling behind quite heavily. I think because it's, you know, Copenhagen Wolves making the choices, they're going to be able to hold on to this lead until Rockat are. Uh, comfortable just settling down. Whenever we see these swaps happening, it tends to happen for seven, eight, nine minutes time, and then eventually one team just goes, you know what, it's not worth losing the CS, it's not worth losing the experience, and they stop doing it. Right? For the time being, Overpower is once again going to be battling against Kaltard, and that matchup is still very, very even, but I think Kaltard is running just a little bit scared, relying on those ranged abilities on his Q to keep himself alive. So the top lane, we haven't really had a chance to look at the Eos one. It's the good old Shavana up against Mundo. So these two teams, once again, are just going to be butting heads in this top lane for a while. I don't expect to see any kills. Remember like last time, Yazazas, he had the help of Jankos. I'm wondering whether he's going to have that again. I actually don't even think he needs it. You know, it's definitely a possibility. Of course, uh, you know, Jankos can come and gank for him, but if we once again see that Blade of the Rune King build, we can actually see the Shivana just completely controlling Dr. Mundo, and Zazas has the ability to do it. We've seen yesterday his Renekton play was phenomenal, and, you know, help will aid that, that endeavor, but he should be able to pick himself up that Blade of the Rune King and maybe just control the lane himself. Once again, Amazing is looking for a gank. Amazing is really trying to, to make something work for the Copenhagen Wolves. They've caught Saliva. Unlimited goes a bit too deep there, and they can see immediately gets slowed down by that Glitter Lance of Vanda. And you know what? They had the 10 CS advantage built up. It's been all dragged back by Rockout. Yeah, and Unlimited really didn't need to go in there. You know, yes, he caught Saliva, but it was just, just a little bit out of tower range. He didn't even get the stun down either. You know, primed up that Q, didn't land the auto attack, and you know, back the way, almost being taken down. So, it's up working out. That's a flash from Kaltard. Yeah. Terrified of the all-in from Overpower. Overpower forcing that out, and that's going to put him just at level six as well. Forced him completely to flash away. Like you say, he seems to be terrified of his play. So clearly, this may be something that they've played in solo queue before against each other. Yeah, it definitely looks that way. You know, uh, Kaltard not comfortable facing off against Riven. It's taken three days to see Yasuo. We've now seen him in two of our three games. Vanda, a little bit of a trouble as Amazing's going to challenge. Well, Amazing has lost his own red buff. Here comes a limiter from the side. Yankos engages. Yankos comes around. That's going to be the ultimate used. Ace in the hole pops on towards him. Amazing is going to get away, though. And that was a number of ultimates used by Rockout. They wanted to get the aggression. They wanted to get the kills, but it didn't work. And if only there was a Requiem available from Akarthus, maybe it could have worked out. But I really like the play from Rockout. Grouping up as a three-man, realizing they've got the AD carry and support to aid the counter juggling and aid the buff steal. So they get the red buff away, almost pick up a kill, and... You know, it was, it was good defensive play from Unlimited in that regard. He stunned Jankos up as soon as he was trying to move past. So, very good reactionary play there by Leona to save his teammate's life. And remember, of course, because Yasuo is in there, it does mean that Amazing is going to be taking the blue buff himself if he lives. He's having to run. Yeah, can't take it. He's not going oh, to no, he, wants, he wants to give it Forgiven? Oh, no, I just think he's too low. Forgiven's coming to tank it up, and yeah. Amazing will complete it. But, I mean, almost, you know, almost pulling a broken shot and dying to a buff is not something anybody wants to do at this level of play. So but, again, uh, good, good reactionary play. You see the duo lane once again swapping. You know, uh, Forgiven and Limited, this is the fourth or fifth lane swap that we've seen. They are back down in the bottom lane. Immediately, Kaltard is roaming bottom. He does not want to fight against Riven. Riven is just able to out-duel him. The shield is, is too much to deal with, as well as the knock-up and the stun. Unfortunately, not squishy enough for Kaltar to kill. And that teleport would have been seen. Youngbuk just used it to go back to the top lane. Bearing in mind we're at the nine-minute mark right now, Rockat don't look like they're going to be targeting that dragon, but if they do, Youngbuk's got a lot of running to do. I don't, I don't know if that's the objective. You know, the numbers advantage is with Copenhagen Wolves right now, uh, because they're going to be able to just react and put four members there, but We'll have to see how this pans out. Kaltard is being surrounded right now by the members of Rockat. 
If he carries on running up the lane, this could be so smart. Rocket realizing a lane swap's gonna go in, and unfortunately, not able to make it work. He's going in! It's gonna be a flash, gets the wind wall down. That stopped the gl Glitterlands coming out there. Solar Flare's gonna land, but it's only owned for power. They caught on towards, and now Jankos holding back. He hasn't got his ultimate available, so he couldn't go deep enough. And that's Copenhagen Walls with first blood for Kautar. Yeah, they're gonna carry on chasing as Jankos does manage to get away, and I think Good play by Rocket, realizing the swap was going to be there, but they took too long to actually make the kill happen. So unfortunately, uh, Copenhagen Wolves reacted, got their players involved, and secured the kill for themselves, and it went to the best possible member. Now they have caught Jankos again. Jankos is going to get dropped, and that's going to be his second death in the LCS, and now Vander's in trouble. He's going to get locked up in a moment. Unlimited's trying to land that stun. Has he got enough to tank up the turret? No, they're going to back away. But while that's all happening, we see the mid lane, the first turret of the game, does go down in the middle. And they're going to be able to secure another tower for Copenhagen Wolves this time round on the bottom lane. So they're trading one for one. Salivar is doing the best that he can to control this lane, pushing it up through the mid. And after all the talk of Dragon, Copenhagen Wolves will in fact be able to secure this one. They've got four members of their team within, uh, you know, shot of it as Overpower may try to challenge, but this is going to be risky. Dragon should be secured and Copenhagen Wolves get out quite cleanly. That's a nice spike of gold for the Wolves. Yeah, stretches them 1,000, 1,500 gold ahead. While it's all been happening though, we've seen Zazas in that top lane, just farming between the waves once again. Went for that build to cut. is gonna get the Blade of the Rune King completed, Spirit Passage will be alongside it. And that's gonna start causing problems for Mundo and, uh, and Youngbook, honestly. After yesterday's game against SK, he's having nightmares. Yeah, it's, it's going to be very difficult to pull away from this. You know, it is a, it is a build and a champion composition that it, it genuinely just counters you. And as a Dr. Mundo, the best that you can do is try to CS and use that teleport to ideally help. You know, that whole bottom lane fight. If teleport had been available for Youngbuck, he maybe could have jumped in there, helped Celevan Vander out. But unfortunately, he burned it just to get back to lane to try keep up with Shivana and it backfires, you know, realizing it's not available. Well, help out in the terms of throwing infected cleavers at them. I think that's what you were getting at, because that's everybody likes to help out with some assists. Well, no, but I mean, if they had the ward there, you know, Overpower committed to the fight in front of the Dragon Pit. And if that, that fight had been followed up with a teleport, Copenhagen Wolves would have been less inclined to throw four or five members into the engage. Well, we'll see how this works out right now. Rocket <laughs> on the defending position. So, as it is, they are going to try and four-man push. Remember, that middle turret has gone down. Dragon was taken quite a while ago, so Rockat will have got vision of that. I think they just realized it. I think they knew pretty much a while ago, but they needed to make sure it was cleared out the pit, though. And it's actually Zaza's going on very low in that top, as well as Young. But they're going to see Kautan has to flash away from this one. Salavar's going to chase on through. Wind wall being used, but it's not enough to stop them away. But Amazing comes in, the kick does the job. And the wind wall was very important there as well. You know, second time we're seeing Yasuo, that wind wall is going to block any and all projectiles. Well, Overpower gets slow, but it's not really going to be enough. And of course, with that wind wall, you know, blocking projectiles, there's no slow from the good lance, <laughs> no, no auto attacks that can land. Yankos once again going to steal the red buff, it looks like. And we do see Amazing forced to flash away. Some panic play from Overpower down the bottom there as well. He's in the... Uh the third hit to just completely miss, went across by the back of the tower, didn't really hit the minions what he was after, but he is continuing the farm. Let's have a look at that farm because we've not really had a chance yet because action has been continually going as all these continuous lane movements go on. In terms of AD carries, they are actually very close, 110 to 113. And despite the fact all of this movement's going on, we also see a 95 to 89 between Riven and Yasuo. The top lane, of course, there's a difference. It's Zazas on Shivana with that lead with the Bladed Rune King. I'm actually quite surprised that it is that even, that it is that close, because of all the lane rotations and you know all of the movement back and forth, it just shows you that both of these teams are staying even there. They're making sure that the reactions have not been delayed. And that is just allowing these numbers to stay as close as they really are. The one thing that has happened, though, is the Copenhagen Wolves have been able to avoid that overpower versus Kautard situation. That, that was their goal for the entire opening 10 minutes, and it is allowing them to get in. Now it comes Jankos into Youngbuck. But he doesn't have his ultimate available, so this should be a kill, and it's going to be Jankos. That's the first one for Rockout this time around. This took them a long time to get in. It was honestly Zazus, all the work he did on Shivana to finally have to tank through that ultimate. Last, he gets the help of his 
Jungler. And like you talked about, is Jankos going to help Zazas out? He didn't need to up till that point. The Sadism had already been used. But as soon as the ultimates were burned, there was no flash. There was no um, uh, uh, Sadism available for Dr. Mundo. Zazas calls it, and that's when Jankos comes to gank. They get the kill. They get themselves their second tower of the game, and they actually close up this gold lead. Copenhagen Wolves, with the first steal of the game for themselves, they take away the red buff from Rocket. Yeah, good reactions. They knew Jankos was top, so therefore they took that red buff. And actually, talking about the junglers, you know, it's important to see how these guys level because both of them have been getting all of the buffs. Nobody's wanted a blue buff, so both Yankos and Amazing have been taking everything from the jungle so far. Yeah, and there's actually been a lot of focus on these jungles right now with all of the lane rotations and with the number of team members available for ganking and counter ganking uh, the buff steals. It's been quite a lot of action. Two red buffs in a row have been stolen away from Copenhagen Wolves. Jankos has made it very clear he wants to be in the Copenhagen Wolves jungle, and that is partially to do with the fact that Zazas can respond with that very powerful Shivana who is already beating Dr. Mundo. And of course, Dr. Mundo with a teleport. Now I'm waking up a little bit, making sure they're using it correctly. Nice, amazing goes way deep. Oh, far too deep. The damage comes down. Vanda jumps on towards him. Wild growth bounce. Kautar up. Kautar's going to get taken down. Zazas jumps across with the dragon descent. Now Youngboy's going to run for it. Still has to pop that ultimate, but I think he's going to get burned through. You can see the rest of Rockat trying to catch up. He does finally have that bonus speed, but look at Overpower. Coming around the backside, can he close the gap on towards Youngbuck? I don't think so. Yeah, two for zero right now. That a whole fight starts from the Lee Syndrome. At that point in time, amazing, dove onto Caitlyn, who used the 90 caliber neck, got pulled so far back that the rest of the Wolves got baited into that fight that they really did not want to be involved. They don't lose any further objectives, though. So at the end of the day, it's two kills, and they got the tower. So a little bit risky, and I think Amazing's just going to be a little bit more cautious on which engages he decides to follow up with. I mean, let's just take this one out again. Yeah. There is the tower, but Amazing's way too deep. No, no, I mean, the way it all started is just before that tower was going to drop, Amazing landed a sonic wave and underestimated how many members of Rockout were around. He didn't have vision on them, and I think because he didn't know where they were, he just maybe forgot that they could be nearby. And once he committed himself in there, you've seen the teleport coming down from Youngbuck to help the rest of the Copenhagen Wolves, and it wasn't enough in that situation. So, we see Zazas backing off. He already got the Blade of Rukin. No, he's cancelled it because there's been a call. I think Rocket want to push them in. Rocket had the numbers advantage, but the minion wave and the yeah. vision is not really with them no, right now. The dragon. So we'll have to see how they play this one out. Copenhagen Wolves took the last one thanks to that very good fight plus the... Uh, bottom lane tower. Windwall is actually being used to tank dragon damage, and that could bite them in the backside. It's not going to be available for the fight. Sazas comes around. The dragon does go down. It's amazing. They picks it up, and Rockat do not want to fight. They're backing away from this one. Yankos is going to get his stealth up in a moment. He's just past the ping ward, though, which is why he's got vision. Televar doing damage on towards Youngbuck, but I don't think they're going to close the gap, and it's Rockat going defensive. Yeah, I think if Overpower had been a little bit closer in that particular fight, maybe Rockat could have done a little more with it, and I don't know if they were aware that that Windwall had had actually been used against the dragon. I think Kautard's gonna be gonna be a bit more careful with that ability. It's very, very powerful and you know can really help out blocking especially Selavar's long range auto attacks. He needs to go through the wind wall before he can start hitting your team. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that as the game goes forward. And once again, Static Shiv, first pickup for Yasuo, most likely going to be transitioning into that Infinity Edge. Clearly, these teams haven't seen Mad Life in action on the Dragon yet. So, as it stands, we'll see whether anyone starts stepping that up here, as they saw in the NLB Finals just the other day. Meanwhile, Jankos, he's on the invade. He's going to take away the red buff, and actually, not a lot they can do about this one. That's the third time in a row that we've seen Jankos stealing that buff away. Uh, and this time, that was alone. I mean, there was no support from the rest of his team. Zazas and Shivana was miles away, and that was, that was a risky steal. That was a very risky invade, but he gets away with it because nobody from Copenhagen Wolves were able to respond quickly enough, and he backs out. He's got those Sorcerer's Shoes and the Spirit of the Spectral Wraith completed as well, so most likely going to work himself towards a, um, a Deathfire Grasp, and this is something we've been seeing Jankos do is going, <laughs> going all in on damage items on his jungle champions. Full nuke ability. Something we used to see from Diamond Box a long time ago in that full on aggression. He's gone recently to a bit more defensive support items, but Jankos, one more hit and we'll take down that pink ward. We do see Unlimited also clearing out the wards and immediately, bing, bing, everything goes back down. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves now sitting 200 gold ahead, two towers apiece. They, you know, managed to pick up that last dragon. And I think with only the top outer turret remaining and not really being able to push it, 
you have to give some props here to Young Buck. He's only 30 CS down in this matchup right now. It's it's still a, a negative, but he's not as far behind as we have seen this matchup go in the past. So we'll have to see how effective he becomes once these prolonged team fights come out. And once again, there's Yasuo using that sweeping blade, the dashing ability, following it up with the Steel Tempest is Q, and actually does the small area of effect knock up in the circle. And you know, after all the swapping, the changing the lanes, I wonder how Overpower and Kowtard are now going to measure up. Because of course, Kowtard has that kill. You saw just a moment ago with the gold, he's got about an 800 gold lead over Overpower as well. So it seems to me that now that he's got that static shift, now that Infinity Edge is underway, he's starting to feel a lot more confident. Yeah, I think the static shift gives him all the mobility he needs to get his shield back up for that uh, passive of his. Doubles the crit chance as well so he can control the wave. I still don't think he wants to go head to head. I still think against a Bloodthirster with the, the regen and the shield that you get on Overpower's Riven, he's still a little scared. But we most likely see amazing roaming with him. You know, in the previous game, Kerp and Aranea, they were ganking and they were basically holding hands the entire early game, you know, first 20 minutes. And it worked for them, got them two kills. This time round, a little bit less emphasis on those ganks and the Dragon's Rage into Last Breath combinations. Overpower's been given a good chunk of time on towards this bottom turret. He does step away the moment Kautai comes in. So realizing there is a danger now. It's not just such a one-sided fight for him. And he wasn't too sure on the vision of everyone else coming towards him. And you know, there is a little bit of possibility for outplay on both of these champions. You know, they can dodge skill shots, they can dodge the knockup, there's, you know, CC for both. And it, it can come down to whoever gets the jump on your opponent first, allows you to land all the burst, and, and then just chase them down for the final kill. So as it stands, respect between Overpower and Kowtod. The rest of the Copenhagen Wolves need to start finding an answer for the split push Zazus. And I think Zazus is going to do exactly what SK Gaming did with their top lane Shivana. Let them split push and try force fights in your 4v4, which is very good for Rocket. They've got a massive shield from Evelyn. They've got the wild growth from Lulu. They can do well in 4v4 situations. Kautar throwing down that wind wall, making sure there's no Piltover Peacemakers coming his way. Silver instead will take away the race around the side. Ooh, just sidestep in the... Uh Whirlwind coming in his direction. It is the Q, it's the Steel Tempest, the third charge of it. Yeah. It looks pretty much like a Howling Gale that you'd get from a Janna. Basically, just a little more damage is the way it works. As well. But yeah, and you know, gives you the knockup, and of course, his ultimate only can be targeted on champions that have been you know, affected by knockups and mobilities. And right now, very passive play. You know, the last dragon was the last little bit of maybe something could happen. And with it respawning in a minute's time, I anticipate the Copenhagen Wolves to just push out their lanes, ward up the Dragon Pit, and maybe try to get control of it because the Wolves have been the ones with more focus on Dragon. They've taken two of them so far, and I think their objective play around that pit is very good right now. 45 seconds into that, but Dragon respawns and three members of Rocket teleports him back. That signifies they really want to fight for this one. Yeah, and they, they should be able to. I mean, you're even on gold right now. I think in a, in a 5v5 situation, as long as Seliva doesn't get completely shut down by Amazing and Kowtard, I think I prefer Rocket's 5v5. There's shields to get through, there's a wild growth, there's a very, very tanky Shivana. And on the condition Seliva can deal damage through a prolonged fight, I think Rocket can win it. So the onus is going to be on Copenhagen Wolves to find an opportunity to actually catch Selivar out. You see them trying to set something up. Teleport is available for Rocket, uh, for Copenhagen Wolves, for Young Buck to join the fight in this pit. But there is no wards around. So he's going to take some time, deal a lot of damage to this top lane tower. Yeah, it may well take that tower down before he even needs to teleport in. We saw Overpower is actually blocking Kaltard from coming down around the bottom lane. Instead, he's going to have to come in separate from the rest of his team. So he's coming in a pincer move. Teleport's coming. Now he's going to try and join him. Here comes Jogbuck. The teleport comes in. They haven't taken the dragon down just yet. They're going to back away from this one. They're actually fighting it in the back. Overpower's going to get focused on. Catches one of these infected cleavers. Zazas comes in. Dragons descent across four members of the Copenhagen Wolves. It's unlimited. They're focusing on. But while that's happening, Overpower dodging away from the calling. He's going to run for his Lives. Jankos has got in. He takes down the support. And now Jankos is on towards Jungbuck. Jungbuck taken low. Everybody else from the Copenhagen Wolves backing away from this one. And Salivar, untouched so far, just forces them all away. Rocket going to go for Dragon. There's not enough knockups there. Once again, we see the, the last breath not being used in a big team fight. Kautard is unable to get in there, unable to get that damage down. And Rocket are the ones that secure the Dragon. I think Overpower did a very, very good job at drawing the attention from Forgiven. And once Forgiven, Given was worried about overpower, Zazas just threw himself in there in Dragon's Descent. 
This is the replay. Take a look at Overpower from behind. He's immediately going to look for uh, Forgiven once he puts himself in this bush. And with the aid of Zazus, they focus on the AD carry, pull him away from the fight, and that allows the rest of Rocket to pick up some kills. At the moment, it does look like there's a little bit of action going on in the live game. As you can see, amazing. He's trying to find himself onto Zazus, and he has actually found him. He has found him. Zazus will go down. No! He survives. Is it going to be enough? Forgiven comes in. He gets the lock on there. Overpower's taking the bottom turret, but it's Yankos they're going to go for now. Youngbot will come journeying through with that burning agony running. Salavar's going to try and turn this one back around. Ace in the hole coming out. That's going to get blocked off. Youngbot taking low, and Rocket well. They pushed a little too far on the walls there. Yeah, Forgiven manages to pick up the first kill onto Zazus. He is down. While that fight was going on, we see Overpower split pushing on the bottom lane. They may trade tower for tower. I didn't see how much hit points was sitting on Overpower's one, but trading an inner turret for an outer turret, I think Rocket will be happy with that trade. They just had to give up two additional kills, which is obviously not ideal. Yeah, it was two towers, I believe, that he took down that bottom outer and inner turret there for overpower and that's something they've got to make sure they watch because Kautard comes in overpowers waiting in a bush and we're already seeing the difference in power and overpower just destroyed Kautard. Windslash didn't even connect I mean the ultimate the active from overpowers Riven didn't even connect with Kautard and it was still enough damage to burst him through Kautard stunned knocked up and with the bloodthirster and the last whisper there was too much damage for the very squishy glass cannon Kautard to deal with Zenith Blade does not find its home. Blue Buff has spawned, but I think uh, Copenhagen Wolves will be picking this one up without any fights. The question is, who will it go to? I guess Forgiven will be having that one. Jankos, he's looking towards his top lane. He's got Zazas with him. They may try and go for Youngbok here. He's been caught out of position once again. Here they come, the double team, the terror for fine Polish team coming in towards the top lane. Youngbok, he's trying to run away. Pops out ultimate, should have enough to get away. Does actually get away because the Blade of the Rune King was used. They couldn't chase him further. Now Overpal looking to fight just a little bit. We've seen Unlimited for a brief second, but if Copenhagen Wolves had picked that battle, they probably would have lost. There was much more members of Rocket that, that could have responded faster and I think wisely they back away and as we talked about the Deathfire Grasp has been picked up there for Jankos's Elise so uh, Evelyn rather so gonna have a lot of damage a lot of burst something that was lacking from Millennium when they had a very physical damage team which the rest of Rocket very clearly is so very even between these two still only 2,000 gold separating the two teams, 27 minutes into this game. Quick check from Kautard. Baron started? No, it's clear. That means they're going to back off there. 4 3 in turrets, Rocket with that advantage. 6 4 in kills, of course, you can see that at the top of your screen. Item wise, Randy and Omen has been completed by Youngwick. It was used in a moment ago to help him escape along with that Sunfire Cape, which he picked up a mile away. Now he needs to get that Spirit Passage because, as has already been proven, his hit points are getting churned down very quickly. He needs that regen much faster. Yeah, and there's a lot of mixed damage that actually comes up from Shivana. Part of the reason that Dr. Mundo has such a difficult time with Blade of the Rune King Shivana is that all the additional physical damage from the burnout, from the procs of that uh, passive on Blade, and all the magic damage of the, the, the flame breath, etc., you can't itemize specifically. Once Spirit Visage is completed, it helps. And that's when Young Black stops being insta-kill potential and can start trying to control his lane but he's only 20 cs down i think young buck is doing a phenomenal job of keeping up with shivana he just needs to make it count with more teleport usages and more control uh -oh. and this is version two version two version two going again kautar this time does try and dice and slice tries to get away from there is it going to be enough though it Overpower didn't fancy that, didn't have vision of the bush. Yeah, no vision, no understanding of where the rest of Rocket were, and I think that was a, a smart call. I think don't don't commit, especially if Unlimited got there in time. A solar flare plus a stun from the shield, that probably would have been enough time to kill Overpower because Kaltar's got a lot of damage. Infinity Edge plus Static Shiv, 90% crit plus that Vamp Scepter, he is actually very scary. Well, okay, so let's take a look at what is actually happening because we've got Zaza split push in the top that. Youngbook is struggling to keep up with. We've got Overpower split pushing down the bottom that Kaltar can't deal with. At what point, when these come together, does the Copenhagen Wolves have an issue? I think Copenhagen Wolves have two options available. They can commit multiple members of their team to one lane, get that person uh, you know, taken down, and then push that lane. Alternatively, they can leave both of the split pushers alone, group up as five, and shove the lane down themselves. Force Rocket into a position where it's a 5v3, where Copenhagen Wolves can dive quite effectively. If you get a Dragon's Rage kick, follow it with Last Breath and Dr. Mundo tanking a tower, you can actually dive a three-man. 
So I think the Copenhagen Wolves should, you know, challenge one lane or go down the middle because at the moment losing two and just farming the third is a net loss. Well, it's a 5v4 should the Copenhagen Wolves go for this. I say that, but Youngbook switches. He has on the, the teleport available. That's going to be Solar Flare catching on towards Vander. Vander going to get dropped here. And no, Wild Growth does save himself for a little bit. The Culling doing damage. The Culling gets a kill. That may be the first kill of the LCS of the Culling right now. The rest of the Wolves now realizing the, the support is down for Rocket. They are sticking to the mid lane. This is a good decision. Youngbuck has teleport available so he can help his team in the middle lane if he decides to TP in. We'll see if Overpower can get you because Overpower is going to come from behind. That was a great knockout. Zazas goes aggressive, jumps on that. Ace in the hole comes through. Zayankos has to run away though. Ignite will be enough to take him down. It's Kautar that picks it up and Overpower realizing it. He can't go in for this one. It's a five man Copenhagen Wolves. Firing through the mid middle. For a brief second, it looked like Amazing was actually going to save him. They've caught Overpower. They're going to try and go for it. There's Overpower running for his life here. The infected cleavers are just flashing past his face and he dodges out. But the tower, it's holding on because they're not attacking it. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves are more the kill. Youngbuck could die. Youngbuck in trouble, but quickly gets locked up by Unlimited. Zazas tries to join him, but quickly gets interrupted. Solar Flare comes back out there. Fivin catching on towards Salava. Salava has to use Barrier to save his life. Finally, they step away. The tower may go down eventually. Last Breath is still available from Kowtard. I haven't seen a very like massively effective usage from that just yet. We'll have to see how he makes it count in the later stages. Rocket, after losing multiple kills, do not give up any more towers. That is important to note. They do lose the Dragon, which is just keeping the gold even. But I think super importantly, the fact they held onto their towers is vitally important to prevent Copenhagen Wolves doing that five-man push that we talked about. Tight positional play between these two teams. Just 500 gold separates them right now. 31 minutes into this game. Forgiven, he's going to get himself the blue buff. He's going to have to start moving because Rocket are already in position for a Baron. I don't think they're going to go for this, but they do have good vision around that area. And they would be able to shred this down very quickly with that Bloodthirster loss, Whisper. Oh, and Limit is going to be caught. I'm not sure if he's going to get caught out enough, though. Yankos, oh, he took a big burst from Kautar there. The static shift. Cullen comes well across once again. You can't get two kills in one game. Youngberg, oh my word, he's burst down very quickly there. Zazas has to use the Dragon to set to dry and get away on Shivana. And now Vander's backed off. Ace in the hole doesn't catch anyone from behind. And this is just simply a problem. Rocket out of position here. They've got to back away. Yeah, and Copenhagen Wolves need to get a tower now. Rocket did well to defend the last time, but they're well out of position for this particular attempt. And as I thought, Unlimited may get focused down. The rest of the Wolves just wrap around from the jungle, manage to pick up some kills. They get the turret, and the Wolves are going to back away, not feeling confident that the 5v4 is powerful enough to get on that inhib turret. What a game we have on our hands here, ladies and gentlemen. The Wolves and Rocket going at it toe for toe. It's still only 7-6, a low kill score game, you could say, but the action is very much back and forth. They've certainly been engaging with one another, just only getting one kill every time they have a 5v5 exchange. They're going Baron quick. Yeah, and Limited might get killed. Baron is available in the background. That's going to be a deal Limited. That's going to be Overpower. He's just baiting them. They're all focused on Overpower. They don't care because they're taking the Baron. Baron's only at half-life, though. The rest of the Copenhagen Wolves are now here in oh. time, and Rocket have to peel away. Jankos was not there, so they were trying to rush that Baron out. They just didn't have the damage without Overpower, and now it's going to be the Wolves starting the Baron off. Yeah, they're very happy to jump right in there. Some damage is already dealt, and this is a smart decision from the Wolves. The waves are pushing on their inhibitor turret in the bottom lane. There's a wave pushing the top lane, and I think if those waves were in favor of the Wolves pushing against Rocket, then they could have gone for Baron. I, I think it's a smart decision to back away. Somebody needs to go kill those minions because it could be a lot of damage that's unneeded and unnecessary. Yeah, still nobody's going to it. Finally, we're seeing Forgiven backing off, but I think they were so worried about the counter engage on Baron that it took them such a delay, and they've actually lost out on, I'd probably say, a double wave there on the tower. Yeah, at least. At least. There's a lot of minions that have been lost and wasted. You know, in terms of the items, we're actually seeing Forgiven, uh, uh, Kowtod rather, Going towards a Blade of the Rune King, I think this is actually quite a smart pickup against the effective health targets of the Wild Growth on Lulu and, you know, Shivana, Eve, etc. But we do see a Yomumu's, Yomu's Ghost Blade. I don't actually know how to say the first word, just FYI. The Ghost Blade is picked up by Overpower's Riven. And this is a little bit of an unconventional item pick, but I like it because its movement speed allows you to chase and it also gives you that armor pin once you throw the active down. Yankos, he is heading for a... Uh it's on his hourglass. Why not? Why not? There's a jungler. That's that's the item he wants in there. Or maybe he's just going to keep the Seeker's Arm Guard and then go for a uh, Rabadon's Death Cap. That's what he's been heading towards. But he's not getting as fed as he was against 
super hot crew. It doesn't seem to be working out as well for him in this game, this Evelyn pick. He has still got a lot of damage, but as it is, every time he comes in, they immediately focus him. Yeah, another incredibly even game between these two teams. And with so much damage on both sides, it's actually difficult to win a, a, a team fight instantly because you can focus single targets very well. Even if Zazus were to jump in right now, if he were to be focused by Forgiven and Kaltard, you know, that's an Infinity Edge Static Shiv, plus Bloodthirst and the makings of another Infinity Edge. He would go down relatively quickly. I'd like to see some armor penetration on both Kalt uh, on Kaltard, rather, because in the previous game, we've seen how ineffective Kerb's late armor pen was, and Kaltard's going to suffer a similar fate. Well, Overpass about to show himself a long way down that bottom lane, so we'll see where the Copenhagen Wolves trying to react to this one. They are in good position. They need to sweep out those awards that are all around the Baron area, which is why you can see the two sweeping lenses being picked up. Still only one for Rucker. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves are pushing very aggressively because they have teleport available and they see Overpower. They've caught Jankos. They've caught Jankos. He's going to get in trouble. He does use the Wild Grab to help him out here. Is it going to be enough? Tries to get that shield with his ultimate. He should survive here, but they're going to come rushing through. No, amazing catch is in there. That's Jankos down again. The Dragon's Rage kick was used to finish off the kill, so it's not available for this next fight. Wolves now, knowing that the, it's a 5v4, they're going to take their fifth tower of the game, and they're playing very objective. They could either go to the inhibitor turret or back off to the Baron. Overpower could be considering a flash over this wall if he can get onto Forgiven and just instantly kill him. Dragon's Rage is also available for Zazus if they want to dive in. Wind ball being used to prevent those minions being taken down, but finally that Static Shiv procking off that from Sullivan's last hit and it is going to be the wolves that step away from this one they're doing a really good job right now of just maneuvering rock out and catching them out if they back off to buy they need to respond by getting back to the baron pit very quickly there is the opportunity for a counter baron if Copenhagen Wolves back away. Instead, instead, this is a smart decision. They're going for Baron. Uh, Rocket are trying to respond. Overpower has everything available, and four members are in the pit. Oh, they've peeled away. They've peeled away, but they've split targets, and it's actually unlimited. Tried to get on towards Overpower, and now Youngbook's trying to tank it out. Overpower's going to dive in. He's jumped straight in towards it. Let's see if he can get on the AD carry. Forgiven's taking no damage. Turns it around on his head. They get the Baron down, and now Rocket are falling like flies. Zazas is desperately trying to crawl away from this one, but it is only going to be a whimper because Forgiven gives the chase. Meanwhile, the rest of the team, you can see Zan Jankos running for his life. Selva, absolutely no health at all. Copenhagen Wolves can push for an inhibitor to it. No, you're going to see Kai back on towards Unlimited. Unlimited tries to get away. The rest wow. of his team close in and just pops Jankos where he stands. Finally, Rockout get a kill, but it's all for naught because they're going to lose the inhibitor. Three for one, Vander's going to go down here as well. He's got no flash available, just a matter of time. Randy and Zoman gets thrown just for good measure, and the Copenhagen Wolves will be able to pick themselves up an inhibitor. There's long death timers here, and they've got very tanky champions. They may even try push onto a Nexus turret. Well, they're going to step away. No, they're going to keep for the Nexus turret. There's going to be the ultimate pop by Youngbook, and they're just going to work the way through. Oh, Selva gets caught out, and that is how quick you can go down when Kaltard does use his ultimate at the right time. The Nexus turrets will drop. The Nexus will fall. The Copenhagen Wolves have taken down Rocker. In a very convincing battle, once the mid-game rolled around, Copenhagen Wolves struggled in the laning phase, fell a little bit behind. They managed to pull it back, and I think Yasuo Still some questions in my mind. I feel like that Last Breath Ultimate, not necessarily used to its fullest, but a great, great play. And pushing the towers when they had the opportunities. Congratulations to the Wolves. And it seemed to me in that fight, every time it was the Rocket split pushing away, going down the sides. And the fact that they didn't get that snowball, they didn't get the early damages. Jankos was ineffective on Evelyn because they focused him every single time. He wasn't able to get those ganks, and it seemed that once they'd lost that ability, they were kind of out of options. They didn't seem to know what to do, so they just carried on split pushing. Yeah, I completely agree with that. What what we like about Rocket is their team fighting power. We like seeing them in 5v5s. Their targeting is good, the coordination is good, and they were never in a situation where they could 5v5 consistently or properly. They were trying to rely on that split push. They were trying to rely on Eve to... to, to you know, flank around and get the engage that way, and it didn't work out. The other thing the Copenhagen Wolves did incredibly well was their dragon control. You know, they got three or four dragons back to back, basically uncontested. They played very well around them, completely fooling me into thinking a teleport would have helped. <laughs> my bad for that one. But you know, it, it, it was. I tried to help you. Though. I, you did. You did. I just, <laughs> I just committed. I, I got a bit uh, punch drunk, I think. But you know, very well played by the Wolves. I think the dragon timing and their, their decision making and when to go was great.
So with Rockant obviously facing Alliance in two games time, where do they take this? Do they look at themselves and think, okay, we need to start playing more conservative? Or do you just think the aggression works, we've got to keep it up? It just didn't work against Wolves. Yeah, I don't think the conservative route is the way to go. Because I think when... Worked against NIP. It, it did work that way. Um, and I think it, the, the strategy of the split pushing didn't work out. You know, I, I think if they had committed to slightly more fights, used the power of overpower, because he was crushing Kowtard got him into more situations where he could have an impact maybe, but it tended to be that Kautzard was, uh, it tended to be that River needed to defend. Uh, whenever a tower was under pressure, whenever uh, we'd seen Jankos dying basically on his eve. And from the Wolves, obviously they've gone 2-2 this week. That's going to be happy for them, I feel. I mean, two wins in the LCS already. It's a good start, but they have come into this as big, big favorites from the amateur scene. Yeah, that's, that's the case. And I still think they're performing very well. Mm. The, the games they've lost, there have been mistakes that they have made that I think they can go back to the drawing board. When you look at SK Gaming, it was positional play. You know, yeah. they got out flanked. Might, Correct. Yeah. Uh, you know, positional play. They lost a Baron. Sh should you have been doing the Baron in the first place? And against Gambit, it was decision making. Don't pick Zarya into Kha'Zix, please. And if you do, please buy, buy armor. Like, it's, it's individual decisions as opposed to overall strategy, overall pick ban theory, etc. Well, we still have plenty more League of Legends action to go. After the break, Shox will be joined by Unlimited from the Copenhagen Wolves, and then the Super Week continues with Gambit battling the Super Hot Crew. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back, everybody. Before we get to the next match, we are joined by Unlimited from the Copenhagen Wolves, wrapping up a win here against Team Rocket, which m maybe was even the hardest matchup of the entire weekend for you guys. So, so talk me through it. Yeah, that was maybe a little bit too much. Uh, but talk me through that matchup because it was very close. It came down to really little things in the end. Uh, well, after our two losses, we kind of uh, decided to prepare very well for this game. And we prepared different strats. But in the beginning of the game, we realized that they know about our strats. So we didn't know what to do. But we decided to keep lane swapping until we can uh, get <laughs> Yasuo out of the lane phase. And we'll see what happens from there. Yeah, and obviously when you do a lot of lane swapping, it generally you, you tend to fall behind. You were the ones that were initiating. You managed to keep the edge. Was, it, was there any sneaky way you were trying to do it? Or was it every time you did it, it was like, yeah, they're switching back, guys. We run again. I guess uh, we had really good timings at our rotations. We rotated when our lanes were pushed, so we didn't lose too much CS. And I guess our Lee Sin had some pressure on the rotation, so they couldn't just run around like we did. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that jungle play, because Jankos has been playing phenomenally here, and he was on his Evelyn, stole that red buff so many times, yet you were able to contain him. So how did that work? I know you had a very good uh, Leona ultimate there at the end. That might have been a big part in the win. Uh, it might have been, but I guess teamwork is the one that wins the game after all. Uh, our red buffs, <laughs> well, yeah, we lost our, all of our red buffs. <laughs> we should keep better timers on them, I guess. Uh, the Evelyn was really good, but she went for a really squishy build, so we mm. could one-shot her in teamfights. And is that something you were expecting? Because we've seen it already a couple of times from Jankos. He's gone Rabidol's death cap, etc. in there. Are you expecting? And it seemed to me that once they didn't have that initial craziness, which we've seen from Rockat already, they didn't have any answer. Was this something you particularly worked as, as a tactic, to just shut them down, stop them getting those crazy kills? Well, uh, we want to swap mid mainly to shut down the mid laner and the jungler at the same time. We pick Lee Sin, which is really dominant, and uh, we expected them to pick Evelyn, which is really dominant, and uh, we expected them to pick Evelyn, so I picked Leona, and we could one shot the Evelyn if we find her in mm. the jungle. Mm. I'm not sure what's. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about you playing together with Forgiven because you've had a range of partners to play with in that bottom lane the last couple of months. You had Reckless that you've been playing with Freeze before that and Samurai and Jeans. How has it been for you kind of to have to adjust to new play styles all the time? Uh, well, it has been hard sometimes. The play styles were kind of different from every AD carries. Uh, we had some tough times, but now we're on the same page, I think, so it works pretty well. <laughs> And obviously, your 2-2 now in the LCS could have been 3-1 had it not been for that smite steal from Sven Skorin yesterday. What was going through the team's strategy, minds, anything, after such a long game, to just lose it on that turn? Uh, it was really stressful, but we didn't feel that we were so far ahead. After, when we were watching the replays, then we realized how hard we threw. Mm. Uh, so, well, we were a bit devastated, but... I guess that's why we didn't do Baron this time until a very late game. 
Yeah, we, we always get to see the gold, so for us it's pretty easy to say, this is when you should go in, of course. Now, I gotta ask you, maybe a little cheeky, but you played and beat Rocket. You played and beat Alliance. They're going up against each other later. With uh, playing against them, who will win that fight? Mm, I guess Rocket. <laughs> but it's hard to tell because Alliance will probably be really serious and they will prepare really hard for these games so they don't finish 0-4. So the game will show. And how do you see the rest of your season now developing? You're coming out of Super Week, two wins, two losses, 50-50. Not a bad start for a new team in the LCS. Uh, yeah, 2-2 two -two is definitely not bad. We wanted 4-0, uh, but it didn't work <laughs> out. But at least Team Rocket didn't steal our Pikachu. <laughs> uh, tell me a little bit about your pick. Um, you've played Lulu a couple of times, and they first picked it. Would you have first picked it if you could, or picked it later if you could? Uh, Probably not, because we wanted to play Leona versus KMT to dominate them. Uh, but she's really good with, with Yasuo, so we would definitely think about it if, if, if they left it open. And obviously we've seen a lot of unique champions coming out this season. Uh, is there anything that you guys were thinking, we're expecting to see these champions come out? So for example, obviously we saw the Pantheon coming out, I believe. Yasuo made his first appearances today. Is there any reason you feel that teams have been holding back on the Yasuo picks? Well, mostly the bats, I guess. <laughs> he was well, that, that most of the problem, games. Yeah. <laughs> uh, also, some teams didn't train it because they expected to be banned, but we weren't one of those teams, so <laughs> it wasn't a problem. <laughs> okay, uh, is there anything you want to say to the newfound fans? Do you think that you got what it takes to bring all those fans for the Copenhagen Wolves? Well, I want to thank them because they're great. <laughs> we have a few of them in, this, in the audience, and they cheered for us, and I'm thankful for that. All right, now um, let's see what the fans are saying on Twitter. They're not only fans of the Copenhagen Wolves, but fans of all the teams here. And of course, we asked, what's been your favorite moment so far during week one and why? And here's what you had to say. The first answer from was at lol dismiss. Svenskar and Smite was amazing. <laughs> Comes from nowhere and turns a lost game to a win. It shows that a game is never over. I think you remember that one. Yeah, unfortunately I do. <laughs> <laughs> And then the second one is from at Monocle Jack Overpow using mid Pantheon burst into the LCS with an out of the box pick and did so in a dominant fashion. Absolutely. I mean, there's been some incredible plays. There's, the, there's so many things that they could choose from throughout this weekend. I gotta be honest, it's probably the Sven Skeren one for me, maybe it so far, Sorry. because that was a big turnaround in that game. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. 